Guys, welcome back to Woodworking with the Idiot. There is a reason that I call myself the Idiot. Because this is the third time today that I have made this video. I am a one-man band. I don't have anybody here to watch the back of the camera. So, because I'm having technical difficulties, I've had to flip the camera around, and you're going to see it's like a mirrored version. Everything behind me, all of my signs are going to be backwards. Again, woodworking with the idiot. For some reason, if this video shuts off halfway through and I notice it, I'm not going to make another video. I'll post another, the ending to this one. I, I, I'm working on the electronics end of this YouTube making video stuff, and I'm nervous enough on camera, uh, so now i got to look up at the screen and see myself just so I can see the red dot blinking at me. Um, so we're going to get to the video. Video is going to be on sign layout. Um, we're going to be laying out a, a sign here. Now, lay this sign out. <laughs> just just lay this sign out. Uh, now for the third time, I should get another J sign and lay it out. Um, but I'm already set up here with this stuff. Put everything back where I had it. Going to go over a couple different ways that I lay out a sign. Um, the first uh, thing I'm going to go over is my layout letters. Now this is a J sign that I'm making. And when I say J sign, I mean one of these signs like this back here. Um, it's a roughly a six inch tall, however wide sign it needs to be, depending on the characters of a name or names and silhouettes that they want to put on their sign. Now, I named them the J, they're my J signs because my son's name is Josh and he is the reason that I got out of the car business. Um, working buku hours on a car, car lot, I did that for 13 years. Um, that's why I'm here and don't have anybody pushing my buttons because I don't want anybody around pushing my buttons. Um, so I, I call these signs my J signs. <coughs> and the J signs are these uh, picket fence Picket posts, picket fences. Uh, my brain is fried tonight. It is getting getting late. Uh, cedar picket fences that I buy at Home Depot. Um, now, when I go and buy these, I spend I spend a couple hours at Home Depot um, right there in the parking lot going going through these. I try to get the straightest and the clearest sign blanks that I can get out of these th this material. Uh, but it is great for these inexpensive uh, J signs that I make. Um, perfect. Uh, I'm not going to touch too much on this. However, when I buy these, I, I do, I buy quite a few of them at a time. I bring them home and I put stickers in between them outside and I cover the tops with, with tin. And I, I, I air dry them as long as I can. And I, I do test, test it to see where it's at before I dry it, and then we'll get into that maybe some other time. However, uh, I, I have in my shop a wood dryer, and it's, so, it's, a, it's, a, it's an electric kiln that my grandfather built probably back in the 80s, maybe late 70s, but I think it's early 80s, so it's 35 going on 40 years old anyways, uh, and still works great. Um, we are working on a PDF version of that right now um, for download on our Etsy shop so you guys can purchase the kiln because I mean if you want a, a good wood dryer to build for in your shop uh, these plans that we're putting together are are going to be awesome for you. Uh, but that's at a later date. We are working on that. But when I get this material and after I dry it down to what I want about four or five percent I take and I plane off one side, the clear side that I want to carve on. I plane that side down through my planer. And I leave the back side rough. There I am dumping stuff. I leave the back side of it rough. Uh, I, like, I don't even sand it. When I spray my signs down, I don't get a whole lot of ink on the back. And, and I, I've never had anybody complain about the little bit that is on there. I don't sand it down. If there's some big notches, you might get a splinter or something. I'll, take a sand or a piece of sandpaper to knock the edges off but 
I like that rough look on the back of them. But I, the reason I take the planer, I, when I first started doing this, I didn't, I didn't plane the one side down because it is thin material. It's not even quite a half inch uh, thick stuff at times. Um, so I want to keep it as thick as possible. But I plane it down because it's easier to lo go to put your layout letters down. And I'm going to go over those in a minute and how you can order them. But I use layout letters on these signs. And, and it, also when you're carving your router, it, it, it just slides nice, nicely on that plain surface. What we're going to get into now is the layout letters. Enough about the material, the sign blanks. The layout letters. I use 99% of the time, I use a western font layout letter that I purchased in a starter pack from Dave and Eric Roten uh, from out in uh, Arizona. They're out in Arizona. <clears throat> they offer these layout letters. They come in one inch, one and a half inch, and two inch sizes. And if you need, if you need a three and a half inch letter, you just send Dave and Erica an email, and they will make them for you. Uh, but in the starter packs that they offer on their website, in their website, I believe. Now I knew from the first few times to get online and look this up. This is the third time this idiot has done this. If, it, if I don't have the address right, again, I'll put it down in the bottom of the video in the description. I believe it's great, G-R-8, info, I-N-F-O, the number 4, and the letter U, dot com. Great info for you, dot com. Again, G-R-8, I-N-F-O, the, the number 4, the letter U, dot com. And they offer these in starter packs, and I believe you get, at least it's been a while since I ordered them. That's, it's, if some of my information is wrong, I apologize. But I do believe uh, you get two, two of each character for the, the alphabet and some punctuations that they give you. Uh, dollar signs, exclamation points, question marks, whatever's in the starter pack. And, and, and they're not badly priced. I have bought these two or three years ago. And I still use the same starter pack. Uh, there's a way to clean them, and, and they have a video on cleaning them um, on their YouTube channel, Old Dave 100. Not Old Avenue or Old Ave 100. It's Good Old Dave 100. O L D A V E 100 on YouTube, and they can show you how to clean your, your layoff letters. But I use these. I use the Western font 99% of the time. Unless a customer asks for a different font, which isn't very often, in, in my business anyways, I use the, the Western layout letter font um, from Dave and Eric Roden. And they are nice. Um, the, uh, it, it, they make a nice sign when you use them. I just had a brain fart doing this for the third time. Laying out the sign now. There's a couple basic tools that I use here on my drafting table. Um, this table is set up strictly for laying signs out. A um, couple major tools that I use every time I, I lay out a sign. From Home Depot, I get this metal, uh, this nice uh, aluminum, I think, uh, yardstick with a straight edge. This sits right here on my table. Next thing I use is a square. I don't care what kind of square you use, but I use, I use this square every time. And another straight edge for your lines. Another straight edge. So I have, I have a couple, a square, a yardstick, and a straight edge. And my tape measure. Um, <coughs> This sign, again, I'm just going to dump those off. This sign is a little bit different of a J sign. Um, this, the customer wanted this sign to be in the shape of a dog bone. This is actually a camp sign uh, for the folks. They're going to use this while they're out camping. Um, I don't know whether they have an RV or, or what they use, but this is going to be at their campsite. <coughs> and the... Uh, the middle of the sign is going to say the fellows. My center point of this sign to me 
is going to be the term the fellows. Uh, my camera's doing something, so I'm just double checking to make sure it's still recording. Yep, we're still going, I do believe. The fellows. So what I've done is I've measured this sign out, and this sign is 28 inches long. After I cut it out with the bandsaw. Now, at my drafting table, I have another size sign that is, that is pretty popular that I sell a lot of. And it's a laminated sign. It's a sign that I make out of uh, a laminate, doing a lamination process. So we're actually going to be doing one um, for the American flag gun rack coming up here within the week. Hopefully I can get time to get that done. So this is a 12 by 24 laminated sign that I make. Um, I sell a lot of signs this size. So when I'm laying out a sign, say I've got the sign uh, glued up. Um, I glue them up one at a time, just like everything. Uh, after I dry it, dry the lumber, I glue the sign blank up and, and, and give me a nice flat surface. So while I've got the glue up going, I've drawn out a 12 by 24 uh, square on my drafting table. Again, I'm sorry I can't zoom down to show you, but on my table I have a, a, the marks for a 12 by 24 sign. So then I can lay out a sign, send a picture, take a picture, send it to the customer. I'm losing my voice. Give me one second. I always send a draft to the customer to approve before I carve anything. I told you. You're going to see the good, the bad, and the ugly. I apologize about that. I am losing my voice, though. <coughs> this cold has kicked my butt for four days in a row. One thing I want to stress out, though, when laying out your sign is centering your words. To me, the fellows is going to be my center point for this sign. I am going, I've already made my lines. I've already measured where I want the, uh, my, my lines to rest on the board. I wanted a quarter inch because this sign is not one of my typical J signs, even though it is almost six inches on the ends wide, I, I cut that dog bone out, and that took me down to a three and a half inch sign blank on the front. So I had to, to, to take an account for that on what size letters I'm gonna use for my sign. But I, putting the letters on here, I'm gonna use a half inch letter, or a one inch letter for the word the, that's gonna be at the top of my sign. And when doing the word the, I'm gonna go into my role on measuring your words here in a minute. But when I'm using the one-inch letters or the putting the word the, I always use the center of the H as my focal point. Again, my camera's doing something, so I'm making sure we're still rolling. The H is the center point for the word the. I wanted it to be down a quarter of an inch from the board, so I measured on there uh, one and a quarter inches, and I marked my line. So one and a quarter inches from this side to one and a quarter inches down from this side, and I strike my line. Uh, one solid line across. That line is important. Then what I do is I take my straight edge, lay it down on my line that I just drew, and then I place that word the where I want it to go. And that looks pretty good. So the word fellows, I put up, I took one of the letters from the word fellows. I'm using a one and a half inch letter for the word fellows. And I'm placing it down on the sign blank. And I want it to be about a quarter of an inch from the bottom. So my spacing is right in, in the center. And then I put, I, I, I went up a quarter inch from here and a quarter inch from down here. And I put my straight edge on there for the third time. And I drew my line. Now I'm going to leave that straight edge on, well, before I get to that part, again, I've done this a few times, I take my yardstick and I put it down on, on my table. Now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take my square, and I'm going to put it on number, I'm going to put it on the number 10, and I'm going to put my F, for the beginning of fellows, I'm going to put my F at that 10 inch mark, and then I'm going to space this word out on my yardstick, and I'm gonna I'm gonna space it out 
to what I think is right. Now, I usually try to leave about an eighth of an inch, uh, maybe sometimes a little less, but sometimes a little more, but on approximate an eighth of an inch from what I can tell is a nice flow for spacing. You want to make sure your layout letters are facing in the right direction. Your O's are not upside down. Your S's aren't upside down. Your W's are facing the right way. Uh, I've I've made signs where the S's were upside down, the E's were upside down, and I'm missing an L. Right there, again, doing this again. <clears throat> Something else I want to go over is the E's and the L's. When you're using these, the, the Western, the Western font layout letters from Dave and Eric Roden at GreatInfo4U.com and Old Dave 100. One thing I've noticed is the E's and the L's on the Western font, they, they, take, they lean back. They're chilling. Um, they, when you put your straight edge down and you, you, you make those letters flat, they always, to me, look like they're chilling. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's my taste. I don't know. So what I'm going to do is, when I take my straight edge after I put these on the sign, I'm going to then uh, take my straight edge off after I draw another line. And I'm going to tip those E's and those L's down a little bit. Just, just a smidgen um, to make them look like the whole letter is going straight across. So I've measured this word on my yardstick. And it is 9.5 inches long. From 10 inches to 19 and a half. It tells me the word fellows is 9.5 inches long. I used to go from the center at the end of each. The end of each. The end the beginning, the end, the beginning, the end, the beginning. Oh, L must be the center of this word. That is not the case. <clears throat> I know that fellows is nine and a half inches long when I place it on my board, and I want that to be center of my, my sign blank on this particular sign. So I know center here. I've already marked my line for center, put on the word the. So nine and a half divided by two what was it? Four and three quarters. Yeah. Four and three quarters. Yep, four and three quarters. So, I'm going to go over here. Four and three quarters from center here. Four and three quarters from center there. I'm going to mark a line up. Now I know I've got my line drawn. Now I've got a little box that I'm going to place the word fellows in on that line. So I'm going to put my uh, my yardstick, my straight edge back up there. I've got my line to butt that F up against, that first letter up against. And then I'm going to take my S and put it down, butt it up against the line that I've drawn down here for the end of fellows. And then I'm going to space the rest of the word in there about an eighth, about an eighth of an inch. We'll get this on here. Man, this, this, this layout I should be able to do in my sleep. Okay. And that to me... Scoot that down just a little bit. Make sure your S's stand tall. Stand those S's up tall. Drop down the thing. Now, like I said, my E. I'm going to just tap a little bit down the L. Just a little bit down. And that L just a little bit down. And to me, that's going straight across. So now my word, the fellows, is the center point of my sign. <clears throat> now, I'm going to add names on this. Normally when I put the first and the, the husband and wife, or husband and husband, wife and wife, it's America. Uh, whatever it is, you know, husband and wife, there's always the and punctuation in between the two. Um, I used to use that and as the center. Big mistake. I always hated it. And the idiot couldn't figure it out. So now what I do is I take, when I'm using the and sign, I take that, do the same thing. I measure the phrase out, the word. Or the word or words, the part of the sign that I'm going to place in a specific area on this sign blank. So I measure the whole word out, and 
I use the center of that phrase on the center point of where I'm placing that phrase at on the sign. Um, it just makes it look a heck of a lot better. Uh, and my signs have come out much, much better. I, I've, I'm not an artistic man, believe it or not. <clears throat> I cannot draw a stick figure for you. It'll come out looking like a boot. Um, my dad, the Reverend, and my sister, they are my biggest critics. Uh, constructive criticism. And, and laying my signs out for the longest time has been an issue. Uh, I'm not always happy with it. I, I've learned to either send Ashley a picture and say, hey, what's wrong with this sign? What do I need to do? Uh, or I'll have my sister come take a look. It's been a while since she has, but back when I started doing this, she would come out and say, that, that, that looks horrid. This is what you need to do. So I have learned to measure out my words and use center points on the sign. Now this one, because of the shape, it was going to be tricky to make the sign look nice and get the name Lori and Gary on there. <laughs> so I'm going to lay this sign out. And I have made, taken my square, and I've lined it up with the edge of this dog bone, with the edge of this dog, the, the end of here. And I know I don't want my, I want my word Lori to start at this focal point, and I want Gary to end on this focal point, on this line that I've drawn here. So my Y is going to be butted up against this line, and my L is going to be butted up on this line, and I'm going to space those letters out going from the end in, from the beginning back. And that's how I'm going to place their names. Again, I'm going to put the straight edge on there. Watch the E and the L go up just a tad bit. I'll have to redo that. <coughs> so, I'm going to place my L here on that line. Then I'm going to place the rest of my name. L, O, I'm going to space them out right. Make sure your eye is not upside down. Space that out. Now I think this is going to give me a good a good good focal point for this sign. And I'm going to work my way backwards on this one because then it will all be centered. That Y is backwards, put it on there right. Okay. Now that is placing your layout letters in the correct spots on the sign. That's part of laying a sign out. Now, make sure I'm still rolling here. For the third time tonight, <laughs> the third thing I'm, the third thing, the 300th thing I'm going to do tonight. After I lay my layout letters there, comes the silhouettes, the pictures, um, whatever it is your customers want. <coughs> I put these on in so many different ways. Uh, one of the ways I do it is printed silhouettes and pictures uh, off of Google Images. I, I text whatever it is I want. Buck and Doe logo, excuse me, Buck and Doe logo silhouette. I then, I use carbon paper, carbon paper like this. And the best deal I've gotten on carbon paper is at Staples. And it's been so long since I bought this, I can't tell you how much it cost. Um, but it wasn't that much. It comes, you get 100 sheets of this carbon paper. And it's the nice, thick, uh, real deep black carbon paper. I've bought in cheaper stuff where it, 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 I like this stuff. It's Staples black carbon paper, uh, 100 sheets, um, comes in the package. I use carbon paper and... and Print offs from the uh, computer. Now I see some of you guys are taking your print offs, gluing them down on the sign blanks and carving through them. That's great if that works for you. I'm old school and that's just not my cup of tea. I, I, it doesn't take me very long to, to place the silhouette where I need it to go and trace, trace the lines out like I need to. That's one way I lay them out. Another way I lay them out, is I already put them away, is again from the rotans and out in 
<clears throat> Arizona, they have these, uh, these uh, templates, these picture templates you can buy. They, they sell them in packs as well um, that you can just lay down on your sign and spray up and then have a nice line to carve around. And I'm not even sure what these, uh, these cost. I know it's not that much. Um, and they're nice. I've had these for forever. I've had them forever. And I, and I use them a lot. Uh, that's another way I get silhouette pictures on my signs. Another way I get them is stencils. Uh, stencils like this that I pick up at Hobby Lobby, Walmart, wherever, you know, any arts and crafts store. I'm constantly buying different stencils. Um, and another way I do my larger signs, and we'll get into that later on with the American flag, is I use vinyl. <coughs> I, uh, I have a vinyl signs guy that uh, I deal with um, who makes me a stencil. I lay it on my sign blank and then I carve it. it makes it real nice. But for these little J signs, there's however you can get your silhouette or your carvable object on there, that is uh, going to work for you. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture after I put my silhouettes on there. I'm going to take a picture of this, send it to the customer, and get their approval before I carve it. <coughs> always, always, always send a send a picture of the the carve the carving to your customer. I do it in an email. I make them verify it through the email, not just call me up. I want to have proof that that layout um, was perfect because. Not everybody's as nice and honest as we are. Uh, so make sure you get an approval on a layout, especially if you're doing a large, large, uh, expensive sign. And as far as I'm concerned, a $50 sign is expensive. Um, that's why I sell these little J signs for. $50, it's, that's uh, pricey. So that is laying out a sign. I'm losing my voice. Check me out on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Etsy, Woodworking with the Idiot. That is Woodworking with the Idiot. Thanks, guys, for watching. Share me. There's plenty of me to go around. Share me. Look me. Like me on Facebook. I'm out of here. Hopefully this recorded for the third time. Goodbye.